Hey folks, quick video here. Just wanted to talk about um, seed saving. Um, these are mostly all heirlooms, and there's a couple of hybrids in here too. And I'm just kind of taking an inventory, kind of a visual inventory to see what I'm short on. Um, and also to um, just kind of enjoy and see like the, the varieties. So... Um, it's always, getting to the point I guess, is it's always kind of bugged me that governments would start a seed bank, even though I think it's a good thing that we, you know, have these seed banks up in the Arctic and Switzerland and different locations where genetic diversity could be saved in case there was some crazy thing that happened. There's, you know, seeds that are put back in this storage unit and people could even keep their own seeds in there. But deep down, I've always known that those seeds weren't for me. <laughs> they weren't for us. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of been a, I don't know, kind of a nagging bother that I've had in the back of my mind is that, you know, governments are preparing for something. They, they have a, a whole entire seed bank put back um, in case we had to do a restart. Um, well, I want a seed bank. <laughs> So I started uh, started working on my own a few years ago. It started with a, a little green ammo can. Um, when that got too small for the amount of seeds, and I got a little Tupperware tote thing, and that's getting a little small now, so it's going to have to go into a different type of box um, to, to store them all. And I might even start storing them based on what they are. So one box will be for greens maybe another one for different types of corn maybe a different one for vegetables when i say vegetables you know like uh there's one in the wrong spot peppers and beans and then carrots any kind of below ground crops might go in one and then above ground crops will go in another um a lot of these special heirloom varieties, there's a team of people that go all over the world and they try to find specialized heirlooms that have been growing for generations and maybe even thousands of years in small little villages all around the world. So it, they're proven types and they're kind of different because they're preserved by the local people that have been using them. This obviously is just the seed stock. So what I'd be doing after growing these is what I already do now is I save a portion of my seeds. I allow a portion of the plants to grow to seed, usually the most vigorous ones, and then save the most plump, the best seeds off of that crop and try to kind of uh, encourage the species to grow. When you grow your own seed, after a couple of years, it becomes your seeds. They become your custom plant that's adapted to your climate your growing style, the pH of your soil, the amount of water availability, all that stuff comes into factor. And then as you save those better seeds, the plant begins to adapt to you as the farmer. So, um, yeah, some of these beans are pretty cool. Some of them are real big, like snake beans. Just for fun, you know, I got a couple kids, I want to grow some cool things. And over the years, they'll have like these trippy looking plants to enjoy in the in the food forest. Um, but I'm encouraging all of you that are watching this to go ahead and get your own seed bank started. And um, get a few seeds in the ground. You know, some of these like black beauties and um, brandy wines. And here's a mortgage lifter. <laughs> Could use that. But some cool looking tomatoes, you know, that are nightshade pretty much. They're types of nightshade. Same with peppers. And I won't be really growing much of those until after Mother's Day. That's usually when I start planting my starts as far as nightshades. Any uh, summer crops. It's after, after Mother's Day. So that's a good indicator for everybody too. To not waste your seed. And don't waste your bed space trying to grow things that aren't going to produce fruit until after Mother's Day because it's when the soil warms up and the warm soil tells the plant to bolt and start fruiting so that it could create more seeds 
for the future. So if you take your tomatoes or your, your peppers and you wait until after Mother's Day to plant them, then you'll have fruit the whole time. But if you, or I guess it's a fruit technically, but it's a vegetable. But if you plant them now or in April, January, February, March, March, early in the year, you're, uh, you're going to be watering and taking care of these plants and they're not going to fruit for you until later anyway. A little tip. So this is also partially to to document um, where I'm at. So kind of like a little timestamp, and um, to encourage all my people out there that are watching this, get prepared. Governments are doing it, and you deserve to have a seed bank. You know, just like the one that's in Switzerland. Of all your favorite heirlooms and different types of plants that you might consider growing in the future. So, that's it for now. I already started uh, artichokes and a medicinal plant, milk thistle. I planted some milk thistle and, and artichoke in the same family, both in the thistle family. Um, and now I'm starting a few other vegetables and sprouting trays on the counter. So, if you have any thoughts or questions, feel free to leave them on the comment section. Um, oh, another thing. You can, you can trade seeds. You can pass them around between friends. Um, they're just a cool thing to have as far as once you save your seeds, you can share varieties with your friends and then and also your neighbors. And that'll help the insects pollinate and everything because if my neighbor's growing the same kind of cabbage that I'm growing or the same kind of uh, squash that I'm growing, you know, the bumblebees that go after it will have more availability. There'll be more bees. And then they'll also fertilize each other's plants and there'll be more abundance among everybody. So... There's that too. Alright, take care for now. Bye.